So for a lot of clients, uh, after they've done the dietary trial, then, and their pet's doing 100% better, uh, what they can do is they can either challenge, and as I mentioned before, some clients just do not want to challenge. They don't want to change the diet after finally getting their pet to a nice comfortable level, after not having to get repeated antibiotics, repeated uh, yeast medications, repeated ear treatments. The last thing they want to do is upset the balance. So what they're looking for is a long-term solution as far as the diet is concerned. Uh, if they're doing home prepared, definitely what you want to do is make sure that you want to balance the diet because I don't want to keep a pet on just a protein and a carbohydrate source for the rest of its life. It's going to be missing uh, essential vitamins and minerals uh, and it could actually lead to secondary issues. Uh, that's I guess where the commercial diets come into play because they're already balanced right from the get-go. Uh, they basically have all the vitamins and nutrients that will sustain that pet and and keep them above you know what are called AFCO standards uh, these are standards that are set by the veterinary community to kind of meet minimum requirements uh, all of our commercial diets are basically well above that uh, meet and exceed that level so for pets that want to stay on these particular foods I have no problems about it uh, some one concern in that I guess I might uh, uh, kind of voice to the client is the fact that down the road if everything's going great and then they start to see ears, they start to see feet, they start to see rears or lesions going up the back or gastrointestinal signs coming back again, it could be that that pet's actually developed a sensitivity to the protein in that diet. So what we may need to do is actually switch to a different food. So when I start to look at it, uh, for my patients that are canine uh, we or dogs, uh, basically what we want to do is anything that's happening in the back of the body, so ears, going down the back, rears, and feet, that's probably an indication that you most likely have a food allergic reaction happening to the diet that we've been on. If it's happening at the front half of the body, that's more environmental allergies. And in cats, we start to think about head and neck area. That's the classic distribution for food allergies there. So on a commercial diet, doing fantastic, then all of a sudden, six months, six years, uh, eight years down the road, they start to develop those ears, feet, and rears and going up and down the back in a dog. Think about food allergy and think about switching that diet.